Hey everybody, Brian from Phoenix Fire here, and today I'm really excited to show you a new planet that we've been working on. It's a super Earth that we call Gemini. Now, for those of you that have been around for a long time now, you might recognize some of this material as we did show some of this a few years back. Um, but it was more aspirational than, than something that we were ready to, to release. And the problem was is that we didn't really have the tools or the tech to really bring this into a production state. We were listening a lot to what our players wanted and especially when it came to terms with what you want for an environment and for, for a map. And what we were hearing was is that you wanted you wanted the maps to be larger, you wanted them to be detailed, and you wanted them to be interesting. And and so you know, there's a lot of challenges there, and and it took us a while to to really get everything everything working right. Well, I I think in the years since we've really kind of come into our own with with the tools that we need to make a world that works in the Osiris universe. So we're now able to build a very large and expansive, virtually endless terrain that is performant, as you see here. It's very detailed, which is something that is really important to us. And it it obeys all the, the, the physics that, that we want in an Osiris uh, uh, planet, meaning that the ground will deform when you when you build structures. Um, uh, grass and plants can form on it. You could find minerals on the surface and mine them, and and then we could plant plants that also are interactive that serve a purpose. So the goal is in in a game like this, in an open world survival craft, we think that everything that you see in the world should be something that you could interact on and is either a resource or or something that could be used in some sort of a way and and so so yeah we we spent years kind of developing our own internal tools on top of the unity game engine to allow us to do all of that and and we kind of perfected them with the original maps that we that we launched with from early access but we were never really satisfied with the with the size and the scope of that we wanted to go further and and so as you see here we're now flying around in the spaceship and the horizon is a lot further out it really does feel a little bit more like a uh, a flight simulator even when you're when you're flying around in the in the spaceship and and that's the that's the feel that we wanted to go for um we wanted to make the spaceship a little bit more of a part of the experience. And we always wanted to use the spaceship not only to get in and out of orbit of a planet, but also to fly across planet, to make a planet that is so large or a map that is so large that it, the quickest way to get there would be by, by flying there as opposed to taking a ground vehicle from place to place. So. So we're getting there. Now, obviously here we're missing textures on the ground. We haven't decided on what, what textures we want to run there. We have some goals for, for what we want to do with the ground materials. We want to have displacement mapping. So we want to, we want to really kind of bring the graphics to the forefront. We've always, one of my loves forever has always been computer graphics and I, I always love to push the, the graphics as much as possible. I think Unity does a really good job of, 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 getting, of giving us the tools to really fine tune the look and feel of, of the game. And there's, there's plenty in there to, to, make, to make Unity look really nice. And so, so yeah, so this one of the things that we want to do is, is add displacement mapping so that you actually get more detail in the ground and, and then also more variety in, in, the, in the ground texturing as well. So that's something that we're going to be experimenting with next. This first experiment is mostly about can we have a large terrain? Is it performant? Can we have plants on it? Can we have minerals on it? And, and it so far passes all of those tests. 
Some of the other things that we need to kind of consider when we're making a new world like this is how is it going to work in multiplayer? And that's kind of a big concern because the way that this terrain system works is it's actually a patch system of multiple terrains and all the terrains are sort of stitched together at runtime. And, and so there's a lot of things that could kind of go wrong. One of the notorious problems that Unity has with its terrain system is that you might get seams in between the terrains. Now we, we have some solutions for that and we've been really kind of working on making sure that doesn't happen, especially when you're building along an edge. Essentially, we want, we want to make the edges not even feel like they're there for the player. It's really just for us to kind of organize the terrain and, and for optimization purposes. But for you, the player, we want you to be completely oblivious to the fact that this is made up of patches and, and you could never even really find the, the seams, even if you were looking for them. So that's kind of our goal from a, a technical point of view. But within that, when getting back to multiplayer, what happens if you are a master client and you're on one side of this giant world and then somebody else is on the other side and a creature spawns? Now, we do a lot of code on the creature AI to kind of determine who is controlling the creature in their copy of the code on their machine. Um, but it's sort of unknown what would happen in a scenario where, well, what if the terrain isn't even there because the player is on the other side? So would that, would that creature just get spawned into, into air and just fall all the way through the world and, and not collide with anything? Or do more systems need to be built for that? So that's, that's something that is, is unknown at this point. We still need to kind of look and solve for something like that. But what we wanted to do, what I'm really excited about, is bringing you along for the journey of making a new world with us. We've made enough of these where we kind of know the process. And the first part of the process is just getting a basic terrain in there, not really worrying about texturing, textures too much, but just making sure that it works, making sure that you could run around on it, the vehicles work on it, that you could mine on it, and, and that you could plant plants. And as you can see, all of that is already working. So the next step after this is gonna be going further with the texturing and trying to get into biomes, meaning that there's some areas that, are, that have different vegetation and different ground textures than other areas. Um, and that's something that is, uh, it's important to us, it's important to you. I think it does a, it's really, it, it's vital to creating a more believable world and something that looks, we don't want it to look procedural. So that is, that is gonna be something we're gonna look at next. And then from there, once we have biomes, then we can start looking at points of interest. Now it's challenging in a space game. One of the, one of the problems for the space exploration genre, especially if you're near future space, is the points of interest uh, usually can't be man-made ruins of some kind because you're the first person to explore this world. So really it should just be nature. We have played with the idea of maybe there's an alien race of some kind and maybe some alien ruins on some of the other legacy worlds that we've already made, we have ruins left over from the crew that was there before you so that there is some points of interest that you could then go to. But, but besides that, it's really kind of challenging unless you're dealing with architecture that kind of shows age and shows history you're dealing with natural rock formations and more primitive creature nests or something like that. And that's a real challenge to make it have the same weight as something where it is man-made. We've just found that 
it just doesn't have the same feel of history. And so you just kind of feel like it's a desolate world without something like that. Now we want to challenge that, obviously. We want to, we want to have worlds that are desolate, but still make them somehow interesting. And we think that we can do it through the kinds of resources, the kinds of life, or maybe the lack of life uh, that you find there. Maybe we could go a little bit further on the science aspect of it. And that's something that I personally am really interested in. What I, what I love the, probably the most about the Osiris idea in general is that it is more of a hard science fiction. It's, it's something that is grounded a bit more in reality even more sort of educational. And that's something that I really, especially as I get older as a gamer and uh, as a father myself, is, is I tend to, to really enjoy the educational aspects of making something like this. I really enjoy getting into all the different kinds of minerals and gases and how they could be combined together to create various things. Now, obviously, I know that this is a video game and it should be entertaining. So that's one of the dances that we've always sort of done here is try to find the balance between education and, and entertainment. Obviously, if it's too educational, it might feel too stiff and dry and, and not fun enough to engage with. But if it's pure entertainment, then then I feel like we're sort of missing the mark. Maybe that's just a, a personal goal that I have. I strongly feel that making something educational is, is very important to the purpose behind this game and the stuff that I make in general. So in any case, when approaching a world like this, it's not really so much what would be cool or what would be fun, but what would actually exist? Like, what is the atmosphere made of? What is, what is the ground made of? How old is the planet? What kind of life, if any, would exist on it? How would the life that exists create their ecosystem or biosphere? Are there predators? Are there, are there prey, as in life on Earth? Or, or is it some other kind of goal that life has that is beyond the consumption-based goal of, of our sort of life? For example, all animals need to feed on either plants or, or animals. It's this exchange of energy that exists in, in our world. Well, is that something that's going to exist on other worlds? And, and so it's really fun to kind of explore that in the, in the setting of, of a simulation like this and something that I'm looking forward to getting into. Obviously, there's only so far that we could go and there's only so much that we, we can do. But I, I put it out to you, if you are, and, and we've worked with scientists in the past, but if you are an educator, if you're a scientist, if you're, if you're sort of in the field of what this game is, is doing, astrobiology, physics, we'd love to hear from you. In fact, when we first, when we first launched, we were talking with, or prior to launch, we were talking with the scientists that discovered the, the Glee 581 system and what kinds of planets and what star would be there and everything, which is what this solar system is based on. So all of these worlds that, that are going into this game are all based on that solar system. And, and so we, we have some, some information on that, mostly spectrometer readings about what would be in the atmosphere and roughly how large each planet would be and the distance relation to its star which is much it's a it's a dimmer and less dense star than ours so all the planets are much more closer to it and uh, and the star gets tugged on by the by the hot jupiter which we call theseus prime so it's a gas giant like jupiter that kind of pulls on the sun and that's how they uh, they discovered that this solar system has a planet because the sun was was wobbling in their in their telescopes so pretty interesting stuff. We love that kind of stuff. I completely geek out on all of that. And it's a big inspiration why I wanted to make this game in the first place. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Enough of me rambling on about stuff. I'm going to go ahead and put this up on the experimental branch as a probably just something that you could play in creative mode in single player for now. So you could jump in, run around. We're going to learn from our, our mistakes while in early access where we, we showed material that we were working on but then didn't give it to you in-game. 
And so, so now that we have the experimental branch and we're using it, I think in a much better way than we were before, we could just offer this to you so that you could get your hands on it. And, and then we'll continue on this environment and take it through to completion and figure out how it's going to live in the, in the other modes. So anyway, I hope, I hope you're as excited about this as, as we are. And, and I look forward to seeing you on this new planet that we call Gemini. Okay, thanks so much. We'll see you the next one.